We'll see alcohols used as nucleophiles in a number of other contexts in the future, but our focus in the future will generally be on the electrophile reactivity rather than the nucleophile. So we're definitely not done with alcohols, but I wanted to close our discussion of alcohols here with a discussion of a couple of substitution reactions that are useful synthetically and that give us mechanistic insight into how alcohols work. And both of these amount to the substitution of the alcohol hydroxyl group for a halogen atom. And they use one of two reagents, either PBr3 to install a bromine atom, or SOCl2 and the base pyridine to install a chlorine atom. So I want to look at these transformations from a synthetic perspective and their mechanisms in this video. So first, let's look at the bromination of alcohols using PBr3. And again, as we just mentioned, the basic transformation here is that the alcohol hydroxyl group is substituted with a bromine group. I've also drawn the phosphorus-containing byproduct of this reaction here, and if we draw out a full Lewis structure, we can see that a substitution has also occurred at phosphorus, the replacement of a PBr bond for a PO bond, the replacement of bromine for the hydroxyl group on phosphorus. This reaction can be useful synthetically because this carbon link to the hydroxyl group is not a good electrophile on its own. If we want to turn it into a good electrophile, we need to attach a good leaving group to it. And we've talked about how to do that by protonating the hydroxyl group, but that's not always ideal, right? If we have other functional groups in the molecule in this R group that are acid sensitive, we can't use an acid to protonate the hydroxyl group. That'll cause other, other things to happen that we don't want to occur. So instead, we can replace the OH group with bromine a good leaving group that's operative under neutral or basic conditions. In thinking about the mechanism of this reaction, the first thing to notice is that PBr3 looks like a great electrophile. It's a phosphorus atom connected to three relatively electronegative bromine atoms. And as we've seen previously, the alcohol hydroxyl can operate as a good nucleophile. We've got the ingredients here for an SN2 elementary step. A decent nucleophile in the presence of a highly electrophilic phosphorus atom. And the first elementary step is the displacement of bromide by the alcohol hydroxyl. This produces an intermediate in which the alcohol hydroxyl oxygen is now positively charged, and we've also generated bromide, Br-. In a way, this coordination of the alcohol hydroxyl oxygen to phosphorus is analogous to protonation of the hydroxyl oxygen. Notice that we've set up a carbon-oxygen bond now where the oxygen is partially positively charged. And so everything here that I'm highlighting in blue has the potential to act as a leaving group or nucleophuge, and the highlighted carbon, this carbon right here, is now a good electrophile. Again, we have the ingredients in the reaction mixture now for a second SN2 step to occur, with bromide now acting as the nucleophile and the OHPBr2 group acting as a leaving group. In fact, this electron flow leads directly to the observed products, the primary alkyl halide and HOPBr2. Now, this mechanism actually gives us useful information about the stereochemical course of the reaction, because if we focus on this carbon, we see that because an SN2 step occurs here, we should expect an inversion of configuration at the electrophilic carbon. Now, in this particular example, the electrophilic carbon is primary, and so it's not a stereocenter. But in cases where that carbon is a stereocenter, we should expect inversion. Treatment of alcohol with SOCl2 and pyridine results in the substitution of the alcohol hydroxyl group for a chlorine. So this is just the chlorine analog of the bromine reaction that we saw previously, and its synthetic utility is analogous. The idea here is that we can turn an alcohol into a good electrophile with a leaving group that doesn't require acid, but can operate under neutral or basic reaction conditions. And the mechanism here is a little bit different. Now, that said, SOCl2 is still a great electrophile because it's a sulfur atom connected to oxygen, highly electronegative element, as well as two chlorines, which have the potential to act as leaving groups. Within SOCl2, we find an SO double bond, and this is a highly polarized double bond since oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. This means that the sulfur atom is electrophilic and amenable to nucleophilic addition by the alcohol hydroxyl. So once again, we see that alcohol hydroxyl acting as a nucleophile toward the electrophilic sulfur atom in this case. In this intermediate, as we saw in the previous example with PBr3, this oxygen atom is now positively charged. And in this case, something a little bit different happens than in the previous case. And the role of pyridine now becomes apparent. P 
pyridine is this molecule right here. We often abbreviate it as PYR, and it's a nitrogen-containing analog of benzene. And the role of the pyridine now is to deprotonate this oxygen atom bearing the positive charge. After this proton transfer, which is highly favorable, the, the positively charged oxygen is much more acidic than the positively charged nitrogen we're going to generate through this process, we end up at an intermediate that has overall negative charge. And if we focus on this intermediate now, the thing to notice is that we have a nucleophilic oxygen bearing negative charge adjacent to a polarized sigma bond associated with a good leaving group. We have the ingredients, in other words, required for a beta elimination step, a nucleophilic oxygen bearing a lone pair adjacent to a sulfur chlorine bond in which chlorine can depart with a pair of electrons as a leaving group. And now if we think back to the example with PBr3, we see that we've set up kind of an analogous situation. The oxygen is linked to something that can act as a good leaving group, this SOCl group. And the Cl minus, the chloride anion, is a good nucleophile. An SN2 displacement of SO2Cl minus by the chloride anion produces our alkyl halide product, RCH2Cl, and generates this anion, SO2Cl minus, which falls apart into SO2 gas and Cl minus. If you'd like more practice with these mechanisms, check out these problems in the Mechanisms app.